Hi, I'm Fu Wei, the Group Managing Director of Kimin International. We're known for bringing beloved brands such as Mothercare, Early Learning Centre, The Entertainer to Singapore, Malaysia and Hong Kong. So as Group Managing Director, my main job is to make sure that the operations of the business is going well, strategic direction of the entire group, making sure the business is profitable and enhancing shareholder value. Well, being in the mother, baby and kids industry, it's very important to get our targeting right. What a mother needs, what a baby needs and what a kid needs is so different. So from the onset, when we do our targeting online through social media and Google, it's, in, it's important that we are segmenting our customers based on their life stage. When customers come into our stores as well, one of our signature programs is the Nursery Advisor Program. You can think of it like when you go to a bank, you have bank tellers, you have re relationship managers and you have private bankers. The Nursery Advisor is basically Mother Care's private banker and it's tailored to the first-time expectant parent. And why the first-time expectant parent? It's because when they come in, they really have absolutely no clue on anything from baby bottles to breast pumps to strollers. So what we try to do at the beginning is really understand our customers' needs and then after that, personalize their shopping list based off of their needs, their budgets. Yeah, we educate the customer and it's actually quite a long process of getting to know them and then after that, letting them go back, do the research and coming back. So this is one of the big uh, programs that we have been working on over the years. And over the last two years during the pandemic, we actually brought it online to the Digital Nursery Advisor program, where now we are able to connect our customers online directly to our nursery advisors. Over the last two years since the pandemic, our nursery advisors are now able to connect digitally with our customers so that they're able to serve everyone from the comfort of their home. Well, just like many other businesses, there was a big push for digitization on the onset of the pandemic. So we redid many of our systems, right? From our back-end ERP, to our POS system, to our WMS, and even our website. And, uh, and by doing so, right, we were able to scale our, our online presence. Going into the pandemic, we're about 6-7% online and today we're over 20%. And without that whole digitization piece, I don't think we would have been able to, to be able to scale so quickly. And with the new website and the new ERP, we were, also to, we were able to enable new features such as click and collect. So that gave customers uh, new, new options, right? To pick up, buy online, pick up in store, or to buy in store and then deliver to their home. So it was really about trying to reduce the friction right, across our business. And, uh, and also in the past, we weren't able to do next day delivery. Today we're able to do that. And, uh, and that's all through the, the digitization push over the last two years. So that was all about the customer. Another thing that we did was to migrate all of our systems to cloud. So one of the big things obviously was our inability to report to work. And, uh, and when we had the old infrastructure in place, it was very, very difficult for certain functions to operate right from home. After the migration, actually a lot of these functions now can work anywhere. As long as you have an internet connection and a web browser, you can log into our systems. And my team and everyone has gotten so comfortable from, from working at home that today, certain functions such as our customer service team no longer come to work. They are 100% reward. After two years of the pandemic, actually myself, my management team and, and everyone within the organization is actually super comfortable working from home. And we have teams such as our customer service who now work 100% remote. I think in the last two years, specific to the pandemic, right? I think being a successful leader, actually, the definition is, is quite different from, from in the past, lah, you know, or leadership in general, because during the pandemic, there's so many things that are going on, you know, they're constantly firefighting, and, uh, and there are one million problems that you have to tackle, right, on a day-to-day -day basis, and every problem is urgent, and everything needs to be fixed. 
So I think during the pandemic, especially as a leader, it was important for you to just give the team the right guidance on what to focus on. Let them know which balls basically they were allowed to drop, right? And to let them and no and to constantly remind them, right, that they should only focus on things which is within their sphere of influence and control. And anything else outside of outside of it, I like just don't don't worry. Because if you are constantly worrying about all of the things that are going on, right, which are beyond your control, then you will always feel like you're drowning. And I think that it's important at that point in crisis that a leader give the right expectations to the to the team, right, so that they can continue to feel motivated and they don't burn themselves out. Number one, you need to have a strong vision and clearly communicate it to your staff. The second thing as a leader is that you need to provide the right structure, right? And the third thing is to find the right talent and finally create the conducive environment and the right culture within the organization to be able to drive that forward. So our entire technology stack is actually built around NetSuite. So on the front end for our POS system, we have Wondersoft. For our e-commerce platform, we have Sweet Commerce Advanced. And for our marketing automation, we use Imasis. Well, you know, as a retailer, right? If you always ask me that question, the most important thing is to have the right product at the right price. And then after that, I would say, it's your brand. What does it stand for? And make sure that everything that synthesizes out of that is aligned with your brand values. And if you are able to do that well, then communicating to your customer has become more easier than ever. Yeah. And just making sure that you stay true. Well, you know, Asia has four of the five largest populations in the world and the rising middle class. So there's a huge potential of consumers in Asia. And of course, over the last few years, there's been more and more digital penetration in Asian markets. So this consumer base is becoming more and more accessible to brands. So anyone who is actually looking to grow their brand globally is already definitely looking at Asia. Well, it's been two years since uh, the industry really has had an in-person event. So it's going to be a really exciting time to meet all of the different business leaders in the retail industry. And uh, obviously, throughout the pandemic, right, everyone has been experimenting with many different forms of technologies and, and strategies to adapt and to reach out to our customer base. So this will be a great opportunity to learn and network from all of the top leaders in the retail industry.